in this video, we're going to do a little bit of subdivision surface modeling. I'm going to go over the basics on how to get started with it and talk about some of the uh, technical aspects of it. We're not going to be working on, like, say, an entire project using this method, but I'm going to just get you kind of familiar anyways. So let's just get started. Default cube here. Uh, you got a little modifier panel here. It's a little tool. And we're going to go down to subdivision surface. Boom. Just like that, you can apply that super quick. Press X, you can delete those. Um, there's another way to apply it. You can hit Control and then one through six, I think. One through five. So Control and five, while your object's selected, will automatically apply it and bump the levels of the viewport up to five. So if you hit Control one, it'll be one. Control two, it'll be two. You can see how that works, right? But you can always change these just by clicking on it. It's not a big deal. Uh, don't forget your render. If you're gonna render this object, you want it to be probably what you see in the viewport or higher. So you can always change it higher if you need to. Um, and then just work with a, a lower poly mesh. And basically what's going on here is it's taking that cube and it's applying a mathematical algorithm to it to smooth it all down. Um, you select the cube here, or the, <laughs> it's a sphere now, right? It kind of go into edit mode, hit tab key, go to edit mode. You'll see here we have the cube. We also have the mesh inside of it. Basically, this is your mesh that you originally model is going to be your control cage. The mesh that's generated is placed kind of inside of that mesh. Generally speaking, it can go outside sometimes, but um, nonetheless, your low poly mesh controls everything. It's it's called a cage. It's called a, um, let's see if I, if I remember it here correctly. Yeah, it's just called a cage, right? And um, so let's play with this modifier. If we click this little icon, it's going to do end results. And so now we can actually see the cage onto the model here. We can actually select it as such too. So if I just hit two and select edges, you'll see I can actually select those pieces. And I can do something like bevel this. So control B, bevel it. You can see how it takes effect. Now, modeling like this seems like a good idea, but a lot of times it will actually mess you up because you'll have things you're making adjustments to. And then when you look at your cage again later on, you'll see that the cage is actually really, really messed up looking and it's not, doesn't make a lot of sense. It's, it's hard to select things and whatnot. So I don't recommend working with this on, but turn it on and off if you need to uh, for certain situations. But normally what I would do in edit mode here, turn this one off. Okay. This button is going to give you just the cage. All right. So you can work on just this base mesh model. And when you go back to object mode now, the subdivision still applies. You can turn it on and off in um, the viewport with this one. And that works with um, whether that cage is on or off. Uh, that works with this one as well. So keep that in mind. And then you can turn it on and off in the render. It's very simple. And so I'm going to press Alt-Z here, turn it off in edit mode, select a couple of these faces. I just want to show you kind of how this algorithm behaves. And you'll see that just two planes, or uh, these sections of this box or cube, or anyways, uh, kind of two planes connected together in a 90 degree angle. You'll see it creates like a Pringle shape almost. And this is fine, but it's smoothing between vertices, basically. And so that's kind of the result you get. If you add like a loop cut, so Control R, add a loop cut, right click, right? And now you'll see that what you end up with is kind of the same deal here. But if I was to move this down, you get a lot more of that Pringle look going on, right? And so the idea behind using this method of modeling is that you can um, adjust your resolution of your model up or down as needed. So you can make everything as simple as possible. And the closer it is to the camera, you can just increase the render amount here because you got to remember these are key frameable. So I don't know if that's a word, but you can keyframe these. So you can adjust this as you animate. And so as your camera might get closer, you can use it like a semi LOD system, if you would like it. And, um, you know, as you, as you get closer to an object, maybe you want to do an extreme close up, you can have super smooth geometry still. And then if you're further away, when you're rendering an object, you don't need all that mesh. You can bump it down to what works. All right. So something like this, be a lot nicer 
even further away, you can just bump it down to nothing. You know, depending on how far away it is. And so that's that's kind of the general purpose behind it. And this is extremely useful for when you're doing like baking on low poly models for games because you can get all that nice normal data, all this all these faces, the smoothing and everything onto your normal map. Um, but nonetheless, so there's a couple different ways you can control the shapes that you're going to create. If you were to add loop cuts, a lot of people call these like control loops or whatever the case, you can see you can kind of strengthen up that corner section. And matter of fact, if you press G twice, you can slide an edge. You can push these right up to the edge here. And you can end up with a result like that, which looks nice at first glance, but there's this little button, optimal display. What we're looking at is the end result here, kind of applied to the, the low poly cage applied to the end result. So if we turn off optimal display, you'll see this is real dense right here now. Okay, so keep in mind, this kind of stuff can happen and occur while you're doing um, subdivision modeling. So if I was to just add a couple loop cuts up here, what you'll see in down there, what you'll see is that um, when you do that, it's still pretty thick in there, but it kind of alleviates it a little bit just a tiny little bit and those additional loops just do that I, I don't know exactly why but they do um but there's other ways to work so just take this into consideration um in blender there's something called creasing edges so if you press n let's see there's a mean crease here a mean crease value um this works but there's a caveat to it and i'll explain that in a second so this is your shape right now and if you were to apply a crease to it, you can press Shift and E to start creasing. Uh, you can hold Control to snap it to different values in, say, 0.8 here. You can see how it holds that corner kind of like the way we wanted it to. But um, when we look at the wireframe of it, the faces behave much more predictably here. They're not, um, they're not as bunched up, so they're not kind of crammed into that corner. The caveat is, even though this is a nicer result, usually and kind of generally speaking, um, if you're working in just Blender, that's fine. But if you're going from Blender to Maya to whatever else you might be using, Max, or this can be problematic because sometimes you might have a hard time transferring over your crease values to the other software. Not always the case, but... Um, this is why a lot of people recommend not actually using this and instead uh, just zero it out. Oh, go back, come back. All right, just zero it out and um, they'll actually use the control loops instead. In this way, no matter where this model goes, you always know what that edge will end up looking like and you won't have any problems with it. Okay. So if, if you've ever seen people working um, and, and they say, you know, add loop cuts here or add control edges, this is what they're doing. Um, you can use the crease tool as well in conjunction with that. You can actually use both methods together. Um, and it can be quite useful. So you can get even sharper edges with uh, less values and stuff. So this does work and it works nice. You can always shade things smooth. Voila, there you go. Now, another trick here I want to talk about real quick. We're going to just, um, just going to press Shift-A and create a plane to kind of demonstrate this. There's a couple faces you need to keep in mind. There's, um, I'm just going to modify these real quick. And that is that fact that um, this type of topology, or this type of modeling method anyways, you really want to use... Um, we're going to turn the effect off just for a moment. You really want to use quads, four points, four edges on everything as much as possible, if you can get away with it. You can use end gons and triangles if the end result comes out looking the way you want it to, and it doesn't mess up your mesh or anything like that. But there's caveats to it. I'm going to demonstrate it on the model in a second. But um, keep in mind, an end gon, five or more vertices and edges um, per face, right? Triangle is three. That These ones you want to avoid if you can. 
and in certain situations you might end up using them but generally speaking um, subdivision doesn't like them very much i'll just keep it at that if you're using this shape on some surface that's really flat generally you won't have too big of a problem but uh, that's not always the case so i'm gonna add some loop cuts here and one other thing Subdivision really likes using planner faces. And what I mean by planner is if you pull up one vertex here on this end gun, you'll see that it cuts a hard kind of edge right here. And that's because everything's triangulated. So every mesh um, that you ever work with in, well, most meshes you work with in Blender, you're going to end up having um, triangulated faces. And so they do some things like this just automatically. And it can be kind of hard to control um, end guns and and um, even quads you can get these little triangle cuts kind of hidden away and you can't control them all that well you have to make an actual cut to kind of fix it or whatever and uh, so be careful with that you want to use what's called planner faces because you notice this I can't bring it up and make it planner right um, if I brought two sides up we're still gonna get a bad result um, but if this shape was like this this is still technically planner because it's all flat um, so there's a couple ways you can keep things flat you'll see even the quad does it all right um, there's a couple automated tools so select mesh cleanup um, make planner faces boom and you'll see that it actually makes it planner okay so it's completely flat that's what planner faces means all right so we can get rid of these real quick um, that's just one way you can do it. There's also, if you go to loop, um, edit preferences, add-ons, look for loop tools, check mark it, enable it. There's also um, flatten here, which generally will make a, um, a planner face as well. You can play with that tool a little bit. So if I select all of these, just control and shift, select all of them, go to flatten, boom, just like that. You can see flattens them out. Whereas this one up here, clean up, make planner, um, doesn't always kind of get it just right, you know, because they are already all planner, right? But sometimes it'll actually skew things as well because it can't make every face planner if they're not planner to begin with. So it's one of those weird things. But um, I hotkey that so you can see I got hard ops installed now. Um, but I still have my quick favorites. So make planner faces, boom. You know, just click away under the mouse. Still more convenient than coming up here every time, in my opinion. So keep that in mind. And um, all right, so let's go ahead and create some errors. I'm going to turn on auto merge. I'm going to add a couple more loop cuts. All right, so I'm going to auto merge this section right up in there. So we have this vertice with all these, this vertex here with all these different edges coming out of it. And we're going to apply this, the uh, subdivision surface again. Notice this is a flat surface, right? So even though there's, there's triangles here followed by these quads, um, it's a flat surface, so you don't see any real major difference on our edge here. It doesn't really affect it. And um, so... All we got to do is um, take a look at the wireframe and you can see how your mesh is behaving. And this is just simply under here. If you didn't watch my introduction video, uh, wireframe, hot, hot map that to a shortcut or hotkey or something. Uh, but that pole right in the middle, that's what that's called, a pole. You'll see that it actually kind of stretches out away from that a little bit. And then you get these little uh, pension points. And that's because those are created by the triangle, more or less. So that's kind of what's going on there. So th this isn't a bad example until you start doing it on edges and things like that. You can start to see how these poles might be able to get into the way. Um, let's create a, a set, like a triangle there. And so this is going to kind of create a denser piece of the mesh. There's a pole right here. And um, when we look at this edge now, it becomes imperfect. Just a tiny little bit. It's not too bad, actually, but um, you can you can kind of geek things up and mess them up real quick. And you start creating these little poles and these little dense spots like this. 
So you have to be real methodical on how you're going to lay out your mesh and what you're going to do with it. And I am doing these tutorials live. So this is a recording that I'm doing if you're watching live. And also, uh, if you're watching this as a pre-recording, there's people asking me questions right now. So basically, uh, the question came in, how easy you say learning Blender is? I'd say it's real easy. And actually, subdivision modeling is probably one of the most challenging things I think you can do in 3D software. Like animation and stuff can be tedious to learn, but just learning how to work with these kinds of faces and stuff. So I just, I'm using a knife tool right now, pressing K, hitting it with the knife tool. Um, but it, it just depends on how much time and patience you have to learn this kind of stuff. It's not challenging otherwise. As long as you got... Uh, good tutorials and stuff to watch, it's no problem. So, we got... So I want to try to create a real bad error here. Let's just try dissolving all these edges. That should work. <laughs> okay, so this ingon's creating a what looks like a pole right in the center, followed by these pinching points over here. Let's move this one out a little. Press G twice, you can slide to single vertex. Okay, and so Ingons obviously won't let you um, run a loop through them. I think Blender tried to just fix this. They might have, they might have done it. They might have not. But they were supposed to make something like that, anyways. Nonetheless, let's see what we got now. See how bad we geeked it up. Okay. These shapes can become real problematic on bins. That's why I keep trying to go for the bin. Something like this, perhaps. You can see it just, it does not look good at all. Right? And you start adding some other things like insets and extrusions in. You get some weird results. Like, there's no control to this, almost. Because of those those shapes, ingons and triangles tend to do this kind of thing. If you're not careful. You can't always fix things, so keep that in mind. Knife tool, press K. Um, I hit E, so I can keep cutting, usually. You see here. K and then E, if I need to. Space bar to finish it out. And now, you know, I move things around and kind of make sure everything is squared up, right? No triangles or anything. And you'll see here this shape, um, just with those couple of minor fixes, all quads now, behaves a lot more predictably. And so let's do end result here. I'll select this loop by hitting Alt and left clicking. Now, if I press Shift E, add a crease to it, you can see I can sharpen it up too. And so this is actually pretty nice because otherwise you'd have to add a, another a loop here, kind of sharpen it all up for you. My auto merge just do that. Yeah, I think auto merge might have just uh, collapsed it. So you can do this all over though. Control loops, um, and then by pressing I, you can do insets. Sometimes you get away with that, sometimes you won't. Control, and then the minus sign on your number pad. Press E. Oh, oh, let's do I. Let's do an inset. Press E now. So you can start making some pretty cool shapes real quick. Uh, when you do a loop cut, press E sometimes. You can do what's called an even loop cut. So it stays a little bit more flat sometimes. Otherwise, you got to just kind of scale it on Y and then hit zero. You can do something like that. Make a, um, a loop cut. Put one in the center. You can drag it down. You can start seeing how this all comes together. It starts to take effect anyways. I'm just trying to trying to expose you to the uh, 
the basic ideas here of subdivision modeling. Playing with shapes and hard surfaces is probably one of the most challenging things. You can add loop cuts to get certain edges a little sharper if you need to. That looks a little bit better in my opinion. Actually, oh, no, 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 no. I hit the wrong key. I just want this to be um, a little softer. Then maybe right here, I select all this and I bevel it. You'll see that end result, mouse wheel up once. It it's, gets a little bit tedious to work with because your shapes are so small, it's hard to tell what's going on sometimes. So this whole section, I wanted to just push it like inwards. And I can't do that with that, by the way. I need to select that whole loop. Alt E, extrude faces along normal. Push it all in. Now, if I wanted, I could add a loop cut in the middle. Select the two edges and dissolve them. That's kind of a little cheat there. For that kind of a shape. And remember, game models, if you are going to do game models, um, you want to try to leave the edges a little overly soft because your normal maps will pick it up better than if you were to use um, like real crisp, sharp edges. So it tends to work out. All right. Some weird situations like this, if I was to crease this edge, um, you'll notice that I get artifacts in these corners. Um, that's possible because it's just, it's trying to smooth from here to there, right? And then all the way back around. And then when you crease this, this face here still tries to smooth. So a lot of times you got to crease those edges as well. Um, that might be something you need to do. Personally, I would bevel this down here. Gives it a little bit more control, or you can add a, a loop cut, place it right up there. Let's see how that crease uh, sharpens up that corner at the bottom. Now these ones, in order to make these sharp, it would be a little bit challenging. Because if you, let's say you just press Shift E and you start creating a crease, you'll see that it kind of behaves weird. Even if you select more of that, it behaves a little bit better, but then it starts digging into the other side. Sometimes you got to cut things up a little bit more. And you can still see it's causing problems. So um, sometimes you just have to do it. You got to add another loop. Sometimes it's going to change your model uh, geometry. Personally, what I like to do is work a basic shape into something like so, and then subdivide it maybe once or twice. I'll duplicate the whole object. Hide one, just press H to hide it. So we got two. And now I'll apply the subdivision. This is destructive workflow, by the way. So uh, we'll do it twice. All right. This gives me a little bit more control here on this mesh now. So if I was to go back and do uh, subdivision surface, bump it up, run off the end result there. I can shift things like this around if needed using uh, proportional editing and stuff like that. And it'd be a little bit more precise with it. That might be a little too much that second a second subdivision there, a little too much. All right. So I might pull that corner a little. Let's see how it looks if I subdivide it now. Not, not quite as sharp as I want. Pull it in a little. So you can manually edit things like this later. 
Some guys really don't like working like this because there's a lot of stuff to look at. Personally, it doesn't bother me. And I would, I'd probably move those on their normals, by the way. I wouldn't probably just kind of free eyeball it like that. But I can't crease those manually just by moving topology around. Say, like, this rises too much here. You can work with isolated selections as well. So I only want to work with this area. Press um, Shift H. I can hide everything else, and I can see only this right here. So I don't have to modify mesh that I don't want to. Press Alt H, unhides it. You'll see this doesn't change at all. Only this side. Sometimes you run into this situation as well, where like you're working on your model, and you start doing one side and forget the other. So using mirrors, of course, is very powerful. So you can turn a mirror modifier on. And what it's doing is it's doubling up the uh, the mesh right now. Basically, you have to bisect it. And that's going to cut it in half. And right now, it's cut in half right here where I don't really want it to. Um, so, personally, what I like to do is I like to cut off excess. So, I'll press Alt-Z so I can select all the way through, select all these vertices, press X and delete vertices. Oh, maybe I didn't have Alt-Z on. I didn't. All right. And um, something closer to that. Not, not necessary that you have to do this, but I prefer it. Okay, so it is bisecting, but it's basically killing itself off. You got to flip it. Keep that in mind as well. And some of these extra faces here we can clean up. Delete those. Oh. Here, let's do this. Select this edge. Alt, left click. Alt and left click. S, X, 0. All right. The only problem with doing this is sometimes you might get this, um, this kind of little pointy edge going that does happen fortunately you can try to move things around a little bit and then uh, put the subdivision below it the subdivision um, or the mirror above the subdivision kind of clean it up now this also lets you do something really cool which is let's say you grab these faces if you were to press I and do an inset, you're used to this. Or I twice, you can do that, right? Uh, but now you can do border selection. So you do I, hit B, and it will keep that border there. So you can push things in. Remove middle sections if you need to. Do a lot of quick edits real quick. And so, uh, let's try... Let's try rotating this a little. Nah, I don't like that. It's really only this face I don't like, or this vertex. So when you get into this, to your part of your model where you start just moving every individual vertice around, um, it's called pushing and pulling, or at least is what everybody used to call it, pushing and pulling uh, verts or polys. And um, it's, a, it's still an effective means of getting a job done. And keeping your models as clean as possible can help still. So even though we did subdivide this quite a bit, we can always uh, select loops and just uh, put an X on it. Oop. I keep using that modifier by accident. Dissolve those edges. Do some things like that. All right, so we can bump up the subdivision amount. There we go. Subdivision modeling in a nutshell. One more little 
ex uh, kind of example here. We're gonna create a cube, and I'm gonna explain this one because um, originally, one of the original articles by Pixar talking about how to use open subdivision. Um, they were kind of showing props from Toy Story, I think it was something like that, and they use creasing, I believe, a lot because they only care about their in-house stuff, I think, for the most part. So. But something like this, you press I, do an inset, control E, you can do bridge edge loops, create a cut in it. Now you can do a subdivision surface. You can see you can create like chain links super fast, things like that. Um, but also, uh, you can do all kinds of shapes. And I'm going to use uh, loop tools for this. Loop tools, circle. Let's do a circle here as well. Circle. You can see that even though this is weird, it's going up like that. Still subdivides mostly okay. That's just the nature of the beast. Sometimes you can make some really weird looking models. I would not recommend doing that though. Personally, I think it means something's wrong with it. You're better off cleaning it up and getting um, your geometry right. But it's not saying you can't use it. You certainly could if you wanted. So I'm going to select these edges on the outside. Press Shift E. Create a crease to 0.8. All right. Bump up the subdivision amount a little bit. And so that original paper that I was talking about is they were kind of demonstrating playground equipment. And they were really simple models. So maybe like this is like a hamster wheel or hamster house or something. And that's like where the tube would connect. You can do things like this. So I just copied that edge. I'm gonna press P, separate the selection. I can grab it, go back into edit mode. So I gotta go to object mode, then edit mode. I press E and then S and scale it out. Grab the faces here, press E. I'm gonna extrude them out on Y. So I hit E and then Y. Just like so. See, it's behaving badly. Um, I want to select it all, press M and merge by distance. See what happens. Oh, I got creased edges. I'm sorry. That's why. Turn those off. Oh, maybe not. What do we got? What do we got going on here? What's a uh, forward slash question mark there? We got a back face. Let's delete that. Sometimes you can get away with deleting back faces. Let me select all of it, make sure this is at zero. Merge by distance. Kind of a rare kind of thing going on here. There's something going on here, and um, I believe Mesh has one of these you can select. Let's do select. Let's deselect everything first. Let's do select um, interior faces. See if anything's inside of it. Nothing, huh? All right. Something going on here. I'm not sure what. Oh, the normals might be backwards. Here. Uh, go up here. Back face colon. There you go. Look. These normals are backwards. So that's back face colon, right? It's going to show you which way the normals are facing. Basically making them clear if it's the back side. 
Um, I'm going to select it all, press Alt N, and recalculate outside. So now they're all facing outwards. Ta da! Only took a minute to figure out. Usually it's best to turn that off by default. You'll never question it if you do, but. So you can make like plumbing and stuff here on the outside if needed. Alt E, extrude faces along normals. You'll see here where it's kind of like that little ring section. This is a good time to use creasing if you wanted. So I'm going to hit it to 0.5. Makes it a little sharper. Shade it smooth, shade it smooth. The downside of working this way is look how many extra polygons you get throughout your model. So sometimes if you don't really need the fidelity of a, of a subdivision model, um, you don't have to use it. And it, it might be quicker or easier to do it other ways. But that's a topic for a whole other video, so I'm going to leave it here, and I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll check you out in the next one, all right?